Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another ring making session lined up here at Sterling Silver Shop. It's gonna be a really unique ring. We are going to make a custom university class ring for Brigham Young University. So we're gonna be working with silver, we're gonna be working with some marble, some lapis lazuli, lots of cool materials, and it's gonna be a very fun process. So make sure and watch the whole video and see how we make this cool ring. So the first step of this process in creating this ring is we actually have a CAD program that we use to design the ring in 3D. So here I am designing the ring uh, exactly the specifications that I want um, with all the different surfaces and curves that I want. As you can see, I'm putting these different curve lines and then I'm actually going to connect them and create different surfaces um, to simulate what the ring is going to look like in the end. And really, these 3D CAD programs are really powerful. There's a lot you can do with them. You can design pretty much anything you want and for jewelry aspect it uh, really opens up the possibilities. So as you can see there's some of the surfaces coming, coming into play um, and then we add them all together and then essentially what that does is it gives us the final model of the ring and then as you can see here there's the final ring and then we render it with the different colors give it an idea of how the stones are going to sit um, and how they're going to contrast against the metal. And so this specific ring you can see we designed uh, with the two Y's on the side and then the Brigham Young University text around the top of the stone. And then we have the lapis lazuli and the marble. And then what we do is we're going to actually export that file into what's called an STL file. And we're going to use that with this Formlabs 3D printer that we have and we are going to print it in 3D, but we're gonna use what's called a castable resin. Uh, there's different kinds of plastics and resins that can be used when doing 3D printing. Uh, the one that we use, it's a Formlabs castable, and what it is, it just has an easier burnout when we go to actually cast the ring. It just uh, functions a little differently chemically, so. So this is a 3D printer. You can see on the top there's, well here's on the bottom, what's the, the resin. So it's the resin tank and then at the top there's the build plate and the build plate actually comes down and sits in the resin and then a laser hits it in all the different spots and it builds the ring laser, layer by layer. So what it's doing when it the laser hits that resin is actually curing it instantly and it adheres it to the next level or the next uh, layer. And so there you can see all the rings are printed. We always print a couple extras to have on hand when we go to make the ring again and then resize them. Uh, so there you can see there's the rings and then we have to peel it away from the build plate and clean them off. So we first soak it in uh, a bath of isopropyl alcohol which the first bath actually cleans off the majority of excess resin so it doesn't cure in any unwanted places. And then the second bath just gives it a final, a final cleaning. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these rings and we're going to put them into this UV light to give it its final curing. Uh, it just penetrates deep inside all the resin and cures any of the excess uncured resin. So it's really cool when you put it under light, especially with the blue resin, it has like this neon kind of luminescent look to it. Uh, it just never gets old looking at that. So love the, I love um, this 3D printing because it really you can get really high detailed rings as you can see. There's the final ring, um, but what we have to do to do some final processing before we actually cast it is take off these supports. So these supports are just there so when it's 3D printing there isn't any sagging or any, um, any parts that fall when it's printing. So we have to take off all the supports, clip them off, and then we're actually going to take a sanding wheel and clean off all the excess uh, nubs that might have been left and then uh, engraved down into any of the grooves that might have been, might not have as full details we want. Then you can see we're gonna take the Dremel wheel and clean up all the excess, and then you'll see us um, scraping out any of the grooves that might have been, might have had any any small or minor fills from the resin. And the next step in this casting process, we take these wax rods and we attach it to this base, this rubber base plate, and then we're going to clip it down and we're actually going to melt the wax again on the top and connect the ring so it sits right on the top of that wax rod. 
and then we're gonna put what's called the flask around the top of that and into the rubber base and this is just the first step of the investment casting process you can see the ring all sitting nice and pretty and then what we do is we mix this powder with water and this powder is what it's called is it's investment powder and essentially it's like a plaster that's specifically designed for casting and it cures really quick so you have to work pretty fast with this stuff and then we pour it down into the flask over the ring so it fills all the little voids and everything and then we're gonna put it under a vacuum and what this vacuum is gonna do is it's gonna pull out any of those bubbles that might be in stuck around the ring or around any of the surfaces. It's gonna pull them all the way out so there's no bubbles left at all in the investment or in the plaster. So you can see this vacuum is slowly pulling the bubbles out. We shake the table a little bit to make sure any of those bubbles get pulled out and so we have a clean cast when we go to cast. And so now that the resins are now that the plaster is cured, we're going to put it inside our kiln. Uh, so this kiln it has a a burnout schedule. Uh, it goes from really low to really high temperatures. And what this does is it's actually going to burn out any of that resin and wax that's left in there and leave a hollow void with the exact shape of the ring inside the plaster. So then what we need to do is we need to weigh out the silver beads that we're going to use. So it's a sterlium silver and we get the exact weight that we need for casting and we're going to put it inside the crucible uh, that's used for casting. And here's a couple slow-mo shots of getting our torch um, turned on. Love these slow-mo shots. It's always fun to see just how things react in slow motion at, uh, at a higher frame rate. And you can see just the flame and all that smoke coming off. It's really, really cool. And then what we do is we put the metal down into that white crucible in the middle and we're going to heat it up with the torch and get it all nice and melted. And then you'll see we're going to pull the flask out of the oven while it's still warm and we're going to put it inside this centrifugal casting machine and there's a hollow void on one end and we're going to get it all nice and butted up next to it. And then we're going to pull this pin and it's going to start spinning. So there you see it's all the heated metal. We pull the pin and let her rip. And what it's doing is it's forcing all that molten metal inside the crucible. It's super high, with super high G-forces inside that void, filling all the nooks and crannies. And then we're gonna cool it off, get all the plaster cleaned off, and you're gonna see that we're left with an exact replica of the castable resin that we, that we initially had. So as we're cleaning it off, pulling it out of the water, and voila, there it is. So there's the final cast. It turns out really nice. Investment casting processes have really, really uh, high detailed results. And then you see that sprue on the bottom. We're actually gonna cut that off. So you can see we gotta cut that off with a jeweler saw, uh, and then get it ready to clean up and add all our stones and all our final touches to the ring. So now that we have everything cleaned off and sanded, um, we're gonna fill all those little spaces in between the letters and the Ys with an epoxy. And then we are going to fill that with the lapis lazuli. So it's a crushed lapis lazuli stone. And we're gonna fill all those little teeny voids, get it all nice and tight. And then we're gonna clean off the excess and get it ready to set the final stone. So you can see we've got to use this flat end of the knife, push it all in, and there you can see it's all covered with the stone. When we cleaned it off, we sanded it all off, and here is the marble stone we're gonna set in there. Uh, make sure it has a nice tight fit, and then we're gonna fold the metal around over the top. Now that we've done that, we are going to go to the final polishing part of the stage. Make sure everything is nice and smooth and polished on the inside and then we're gonna take it over to the buffing wheel and clean up everything on the outside and be left with a final, very high quality ring. So you can see we're just buffing off all, any little minor scratches that might've been left um, from the sanding process and just get all nice and clean. And it's amazing how high of a polish 
uh, these finer metals can take. There you can see we're left with a really nice high quality class ring. Um, and honestly, we can design any ring you'd like, uh, whatever school you want, but the quality is just amazing. Hey guys, thanks for following us through that process. That was a very fun ring to make. Like honestly, check that out. One of a kind, custom designed, beautiful. Honestly, I was way stoked with how that one turned out. Um, so please, if you haven't, like and subscribe to our channel because we're gonna have more of these videos coming out in the future. And honestly, we have some pretty cool stuff lined up for you guys. So make sure and stay tuned and follow us as we make some more cool rings and as we work on some other cool projects.